Oasia Farms in Napomo, near the Central California coast, is Dale Solomon's second spirulina farm. Visiting in October 2022, the hoop greenhouses are already erected. Even during the rainiest winter in years, by February growing ponds are installed and spirulina cultures expanded. By June, ponds in both greenhouses are growing healthy spirulina. Oasia Farms is in full production. Hi, my name is Dale and this is Oasia Farms. So what you're looking at right behind me here is ponds five and six. These are our uh, small production ponds and uh, they are each about 50 meters, 50 square meters. Uh, so 100, uh, 100 square meters total and they are 100 foot by 24 foot. They take up the full width of this greenhouse here and we're able to get a decent amount from these. So about 100 uh, to 150 pounds a week here in the, in the good part of the season. Tell us about this production pond here. It's a big one. This is a very large pond. This is our biggest production pond. It's called P7. And this was designed to be very modular, so it was easy to construct, um, and, and we're getting a lot of capacity for it. This is a 400 square meter pond, and so the goal is to continue building this model, this design, again and again and again for uh, easy expansion. And as you can see, it's it's just massive. It's taking up the full greenhouse, 24 by 200 feet. It's this 200 foot one. We'd like to continue to build these out. This is going to be sort of like a standard model, if you will, for production. This one's the one we want to roll with. You've got 400 square meters of pond area. Correct. It's just wall to wall. What we did is we used corrugated steel to make the side walls and then we insulated them with foam. It's just a, a affordable, simple, easy to run system that's modular. You built a large evaporation pond we have some waterways here. So if we start dumping nitrate into the ground, yeah. it's really gonna create environmental problems. Yeah. And so I said, it's gotta be big. We've gotta really oversize these things. And so that's why we built that so large. What we'll probably have to do eventually is build a second one and switch between the two, letting one dry out and then scoop everything out of it. And then while well, we fill the second one and blow it back and forth. But for now, for the next year or two, I can get this one which is this will do just fine. Okay, so we're here at Oasia Farms with Miguel. We're harvesting Pond 7 today. This is how we start off the harvest. The pump will bring the, the water with the spirulina up and over into this 300 micron filter that you see right here. That's filtering out any debris, little plant matter, or something that might have blown into the, into the ponds. And then it goes over here on this 37 micron harvest screen, which is small enough that it actually catches the individual filaments of spirulina. The water is dropping back down. So you can see down below here, just got water and nutrients in it. This is what the biomass looks like before it's been pressed. About seven, 10% solids. There's still a lot of water outside of the cell. And we need to remove that. And we put that inside of a smaller harvest screen, then take it over to the press, put it inside of that press, and we squish all the remaining water out of it. 400 pounds of weight forcing down right there because of the leverage of this arm. And we end up with a really nice, dry, pure spirulina cake. Really got almost no flavor. So then this gets brought into the fridge where it cools down, and then in a couple hours, we'll package that up. We would like to continue moving eastward here and fill up this field. As you can see, there is a 10-acre strawberry field here, and we would like to continue building greenhouses in that field. 